Now for more on this, we're being joined by Colonel Rich Augsen, who is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and the Jamestown Foundation, live from Washington, D.C. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you. Good to be with you. Now, sir, the war is close to the one-month mark. There have been calls for a ceasefire. Joe Biden has called for a humanitarian pause. Netanyahu wishes for the word ceasefire to be removed completely, to be done away with entirely. And now we nuclear bombs. Those were seen as an option by one of the ministers in his cabinet. While this back and forth on vocabulary and what options they have at their disposal continues, the truth is the civilian death toll in Gaza is mounting. How do you see the situation unfolding going forward? What concrete measures are required at this point? Uh, well, it's good to be with you. And, and I think uh, that there's two sorts of uh, distractions involved here from the main drama. The main drama of this, of course, is that on October 7th, Hamas uh, was able to launch a series of very deadly terror attacks on Israel from this terror network that in, includes a um, control of, of Gaza by Hamas, but also this network of tunnels underneath um, all, all of Gaza going from 10 meters down to 100 meters and more in certain uh, places. So. I, I think the main military drama for a, a person like myself who's done military operations is how long does it take Israel to get rid of the tunnel network that enabled uh, Hamas to conduct these attacks and, and the Hamas leadership and the rocket technology and all that. Now, the distractions include this idea, uh, first of all, what's foolish talk? As someone who's worked with nuclear weapons before, I can tell you the Israeli minister who would talk about being able to use nuclear weapons on Gaza is a fool. Because uh, any nuclear weapon, given the destructiveness of those weapons used on Gaza, would absolutely affect Israel and its own people. And not only that, but it would be, uh, say, asymmetric and uh, not at all a proportionate, a disproportionate use of force uh, against the highly populated area. It's fool's talk. And I think even uh, Netanyahu has noticed this and has uh, responded appropriately by suspending his minister. Um, with regards to uh, talk about a ceasefire, I, I, I think obviously it's important to end this conflict as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Ceasefire talk without talking about what is the goal achieved and what was the provocation mm -hmm. and, and what is the end state and what follows is premature. I think we need to look at what happens. Is Hamas left to benefit from what it did? I, I don't think so. So I, I think ceasefire talk is premature. But it's not too early to talk for the United States, for India, for Europe, for all the, the people, the, all the stakeholders of the region and globally to talk about what follows hmm. so that both Palestinians and the Israelis don't have to face this again. Colonel Altson, you do speak of uh, the on-ground situation in Gaza, but there, but there are also a lot of diplomatic tours being done in West Asia. In the latest, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made an unannounced visit to Iraq as a part of his uh, West Asia diplomacy trip. How do you assess that, and do you think uh, that will help prevent the Gaza spillover? Well, the Iraq trip uh, surprised me, frankly, because uh, Iraq uh, has this very convoluted political situation in which the Iranians, who are the backers of Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, are, are in a position of great influence in Iraq. And of course, the United States has some influence as well, having uh, some troops in the northern part of the country. I think this part of the visit by Blinken was not so much about ceasefire or about the conditions in Gaza, so much as to war, uh, warn Iran not to expand this fight and to tell uh, Iranian friends both in Baghdad and in Lebanon, frankly, that, uh, hey, this is working on a certain path towards a resolution. Don't escalate because that will be bad for everybody in the region. It'll be bad for Iraq, it'll be bad for Lebanon, and it will ultimately be bad for Iran as well. Uh, right. So now my, my question, in fact, is an extension to what my colleague just said and also what you mentioned. Blinken is now in Turkey. What would you say are the broader objectives here? Well, so Turkey is an interesting position. Uh, they, they had uh, this reconciliation process going on with Israel. And uh, Netanyahu and Erdogan met for the first time in many years in New York in September uh, yeah. before this all started. And I, I, but uh, Turkey also has this relationship uh, where they can talk to Hamas, just like Qatar can. So it's interesting. I suspect that what's going on here 
is a discussion between Blinken and the Turkish government both to, to maintain a certain restraint on the part of uh, Turkey to, to not go too much against Israel in terms of their rhetoric, in terms of the discussions of conflict, and also to see what's possible in terms of a Turkish role for reconstruction and stabilization after this war is finished. Rekha and Lautzen, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insights with us on this. Good to be with you. Thank you.